Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We look at stories through an irreverent and lighthearted lens in our discussion episodes, and our daily stories are a fun way to listen to the original versions in a short format that can fit into most people's schedules. If you prefer to listen to full chapters, you can subscribe to our Patreon page. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. You can check the show notes for our Linktree page, where there are links to all of our public pages, ways to contact us, and all of our content. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Little John Goes to Nottingham Fair Part 3 Then each man stood in his place and measured the other with fell looks until he that directed the sport cried, Play! At this they stepped forth, each grasping his staff tightly in the middle. Then those that stood around saw the stoutest game of quarter staff that e'er Nottingham town beheld. At first Eric Lincoln thought that he would gain an easy advantage, so he came forth as if he would say, Watch, good people, how that I carve... Watch, good people, how that I carve you this cockerel right speedily. But he presently found it to be no such speedy matter. Right deftly he struck, and with great skill of fence, but he had found his match in Little John. Once, twice, thrice he struck, and three times Little John turned the blows to the left hand and to the right. Then quickly... Mm, mm, then quickly and with a dainty backhanded blow he wrapped Eric beneath his guard so shrewdly that it made his head ring. Then Eric stepped back to gather his wits, while a great shout went up and all were glad that Nottingham had cracked Lincoln's crown, and thus ended the first bout of the game. Then presently the director of the sport cried, Play! And they came together again. But now Eric played warily, for he found his man was of right good metal, and also he had no sweet memory of the blow that he had got. So this bout neither Little John nor the Lincoln man caught a stroke within his guard. Then, after a while, they parted again, and this made the second bout. Then, for the third time, they came together, and at first Eric strove to be wary, as he had been before, but growing mad at finding himself so foiled, he lost his wits and began to rain blows so fiercely and so fast that they rattled like hail on penthouse roof. But in spite of all, he did not reach Little John's guard. Then at last Little John saw his chance and seized it right cleverly. Once more, with a quick blow, he wrapped Eric beside the head, and ere he could regain himself, Little John slipped his right hand down to his left, and with a swinging blow smote the other so sorely upon the crown that down he fell as though he would never move again. Then the people shouted so loud that folk came running from all about to see what was the ado. <coughs> Then the people shouted so loud that the folk came running from all about to see what was the ado, while Little John leaped down from the stand and gave the staff back to him that had lent it to him. And thus ended the famous bout between Little John and Eric O'Lincoln of great renown. But now the time had come when those who were to shoot with the longbow were to take their places. So the people began flocking to the butts where the shooting was to be. Near the target, in a good place, sat the sheriff upon a raised dais, with many gentlefolk around him. When the archers had taken their places, the herald came forward and proclaimed the rules of the game, and how each should shoot three shots, and to him that should shoot the best the prize of two fat steers was to belong. 
A score of brave shots were gathered there, and among some of them the keenest hands at the Longbow and Lincoln and Nottinghamshire, and among them Little John stood taller than all the rest. "'Who is yon stranger clad all in scarlet?' said some, and others answered, "'It is he that hath by now—' <clears throat> It is he that hath but now so soundly cracked the crown of Eric o Lincoln. Thus the people talked among themselves, until at last it reached even the sheriff's ears. And now each man stepped forward and shot in turn. But though each shot well, Little John was the best of all, for three times he struck the clout, and once only the length of a barley corn from the center. I hope you're enjoying the stories. We sure are enjoying creating this for you. If you go and sign up on Patreon, you can listen without having to hear me talking in the intro and outro. For only $3 a month, you get the full chapters as soon as I have them edited, and you have your own personal RSS feed with no interruptions. We just added a $1 option that provides early access and more. We also have an account with buymeacoffee.com if you want to support us that way. So check out our link tree in the show notes for all of the best ways to get in touch and support the show. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road. 